Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the New Brit Workshop. I've got a new planing machine on order. Now, when it arrives, it's not going to have any casters on it. It's going to be almost impossible to move it around the workshop. So I've designed this arrangement on which the new planing machine will sit. And it will allow me to move it around the workshop with the minimum of fuss. And I'm going to show you how I went about making it. Now the new planing machine weighs just about 150 kilograms and there's no way that something like that could be moved around the workshop very easily. But in a small workshop like this it's got to be mobile. So I've bought a set of four industrial quality casters and these have double wheels and the wheels are solid and they're all rated at about 55 kilos per caster. So over 200 kilos, that's more than the planing machine weighs, so that's good. So I'm making up a carriage that the planing machine will sit on. Now when you do something like this, you've really got to do it very carefully and make sure it's going to be safe. You've also got to make sure that your casters have brakes on, because there's absolutely no way that you should operate a planing machine on a moving platform. Now I've used casters on quite a few of my little benches and machines in the workshop and all of the ones I've put in have got brakes on. Some of my machines have little wheels uh, for mobility but they all are sturdy and safe when the machine's in use. Now if you do decide to go for casters make sure they're braked but also don't go for the cheap ones. I made this mistake a little while ago. I bought some casters with little grey rubber wheels which you're seeing now and it was an absolute disaster and you can see how the rubber has squished down and they are useless. So buy the best quality caster you can afford. Now my design puts the casters reasonably well away uh, from the edge of the machine and there are two principal reasons for that. The first reason is that where the caster touches the ground, the point of contact, is very important. And you do not want that to be under the machine. Because potentially, particularly if you mounted these on those sort of screw-in points that you sometimes have on machinery, uh, then the casters could be in such a position that their point of contact with the ground is well within uh, the base of the machine and it would start to become unstable. So you want these out as far as practical. The second reason is that if these were mounted under the machine then your ability to apply the brake would be limited because there would only be a small quadrant here where you could get at the brake. Whereas this design you can get at the brake almost anywhere apart from when it's underneath this bar. Now, the design is very simple. The principal parts are these two end frames, one here and one there. And this is a solid piece of oak which has been cut out and the casters are mounted through the ends here and here. And this is mounted onto a base plate. And the base plate is made up of four pieces of wood. Two long pieces that go all the way through from end to end and these two cross pieces and these are jointed with three domino tenons at each joint and of course glued. For stiffening, well these pieces here and here provide the stiffening in those directions but for the stiffening across this way I've got a piece which is at the front which is glued and screwed onto the frame and a piece at the back which is screwed using inset screws at that can be removed. So when one's putting the machine in situ, uh, this is removed to make it easier to get the machine onto the carriage. Now with my particular design, the front of the machine is almost touching the inside of this front piece and the back is almost touching this rear piece. But the left and right hand sides of the machine come to about where my hands are. So there's a slight gap. And that is because the center point looking from above of these casters is such that if you imagined a, a line at 45 degrees coming out from the corner of where the machine will be, that is the line on which the center point of the caster is positioned. 
and when you do your own design you have to make sure that with whatever casters you buy uh, that they can move freely throughout 360 degrees otherwise you'll have immense difficulty moving the whole arrangement uh, underneath you can see we have screws here securing these large frames on at either end we've got screws here and glue uh, to secure the front bracing piece and there are some insert screws here which are used to secure the rear piece the casters are all industrial quality and they come from a company in the UK called Coldine and I'll put their details on the screen now and each caster can take 55 kilograms so overall that's 220 kilos and my machine weighs 150 and that is well within the margin for everything that I need now to make the end frames I've used 40 by 65 millimeter oak and to do the cutouts I've drilled a 20 millimeter hole at the appropriate place I then whilst it's in this position drilled the 10 millimeter hole uh, for the caster which will be at the end of the cutout you can see that being done now I make sure I clear that force a bit regularly so it doesn't get clogged up and start to burn. Then once this process is done for all uh, of the four ends of uh, those pieces I take it to the bandsaw and just quickly cut out uh, the rectangle uh, just cutting straight into that 20 millimeter hole uh, that I made earlier. Very easy really. And there I have both of the end pieces done. Now the best way to assemble a frame like this is using uh, the good old Festool Domino and so I'm going to put in 12 domino joints around this and it will take next to no time. Well, that's the domino joints done. It really didn't take long at all. The great advantage of this method of construction is that it is very quick but extraordinarily strong and accurate. Just check it for square. Absolutely perfect. Absolutely perfect. Well, you see, if you cut things out squarely and you use decent method of jointing, it's going to be perfect every time. Now I'm gluing and screwing the bottom frame onto the thick end pieces and you can see I've still got the clamps going from left to right that's because the bottom frame glue hasn't completely gone off but it doesn't matter and I've used those clamps which you can see me adjusting now to hold the end pieces onto the bottom frame whilst I do a pilot drill followed by putting the screws in and you'll see that I'm using my trusty Hitachi impact driver to get those screws in nice and tight. Now 
and I quite like using these screw inserts because you can make and break the joint as many times as you like and you don't lose any strength whatsoever. They're also very easy to fit and they're especially strong in materials like oak. Now the casters, I'm using a 10 millimeter bolt that goes up through the base of the caster and then up through into my wood. I then use a washer followed by a locking nut. And that's just tightened up uh, with a pair of spanners, nice and tight, and that's it. Job done. Well, that's it. I've given it just a little coat of Osmo, of course. Well, you know me. And uh, everything is complete. The only thing I don't have, of course, is my new blading machine. Um, it will be about another five or six days before it arrives. Uh, but I'll be doing a review of that. So you'll see this with the planing machine very shortly. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.